Ross Chastain on the in, outside, the inside and outside. Kyle Busch side by side as they come to the start finish line. We are racing at Circuit of the Americas as they climb that hill 133 feet up into turn one. You see the brakes locking up, the smoke already. They get through. It's Ross Chastain who leads them through turn one. I don't, even know, I don't even know how you call that, Mike, but it's it's five, six wide. And, you know, I think from a driver's standpoint, you just you don't want to tear the fenders off right here. But you know that you have to go and you have to try to at least protect your position, if not try to advance your position. So the guys in the back are trying to take advantage of the guys in the middle are trying to protect themselves. And down through the S's, we've got one sideways. I just can't believe we all made it. Oh, there's some trouble for the 20 truck. The 32 of Brett Holmes was the one we saw turned around. I believe this is Ed Jones in the 20. Yeah, that looks like could have been an engine failure. Might cause a caution here early in the going. That truck was pretty decent last year. Sheldon Creed ran it, was on pole. And Ed Jones, he's somebody who comes from a road racing background, an Indy Lights champion, ran in the IndyCar series. That's something you're going to see all day there, Kevin. Just forcing your way in. Kaz Grala dove to the inside of Grant Enfinger and made it made it inside of him, hasn't completed the pass, but that was a strong move. Yeah, and, and so many of these corners are enticing to turn in early. It's one of my biggest problems that I have here. There's so much room on the entries to the corner, but a late apex around the center of that curb allows you to get a run um, down the straightaway and off the corner. So you see Kaz just put an end to that. Yeah, said, all right, buddy. And Grant went off the road, as we said. That looks like maybe a broken track mark, Kevin, you think? Yeah, I think so. Rear suspension problem there. And this track is tough on the suspension because there are so many swells on this racetrack and you have to run over so many curbs so hard in order to make good lap time. So it is definitely a racetrack that is hard on the equipment. Such long laps here, 20 turns left and right. So much fun to watch. The Ross Chastain was in a league of his own yesterday. So far, looks like he has things under control with Kyle Busch behind him. And last week's winner, Christian Eckes. He's on cloud nine right now. A lot of motivation, a lot of momentum coming yeah. into this race. You know, Jamie, it doesn't matter what sport it is. Momentum is big. Saw team owner Bill McNally in the garage earlier. All the team was there with their Napa colors on. Just so proud of Christian and what he accomplished. And look, I mean, he's keeping pace with those two cup guys. Something we talked about earlier was going to be difficult to do, but a lot of pace in the 19 truck. He's finished in the top 10 in all three races so far this season. Brand new team for him and to win in Napa's backyard last week. Everything going in the right direction for that young man. Got well, excuse me, sorry, Mike. I mean, he's just getting a He's getting a crash course in, in what to do. And there you see the left rear with that track bar broken, the rear end moving back and forth. It flattened the left rear tire. And caution is out for the first time today. Ed Jones sitting on the track. Ross Chastain, Kyle Busch, Christian Eckes, Ty Majeski, and Zane Smith.
Next Saturday on Fox, baseball is back and back with a huge doubleheader. First, Brandon Crawford and the Giants battle Aaron Judge and the Yankees. Then Bryce Harper and the Phillies take on Corey Seager and the Rangers. It all begins next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern on Fox. And we just saw Bryce Harper. He's a NASCAR fan. He comes to a couple races a year. It's good to see him and his family out at Las Vegas. We are under caution for the first time today as we work lap three right there. Ed Jones with an issue, mechanical issue right off the start. Yeah, and that happened in turn one because as he came through the S's, it was already the rear end was moving back and forth. And then the tire drug something on the chassis and now he's got flat tires. So yeah. he was parked on the track in uh, turn 15. He brought it in. And we did have a few takers on pit road. A couple of the guys who are running toward the back. What does that do for them now looking forward? Well, Kevin, you talked about if they're in the back, maybe there's a chance to, to, to get some track position by just getting that little bit of gas, put you on a deer. What do you got to lose? Yeah, you have nothing to lose. And, and the thing that I like about that is it also gives you less time with that fuel man plugged into, into, the, into the gas tank. And here we see the choose rule. And this, to me, you know, I think it's just pick the side that you lose the least amount of positions. And, and if you have a choice, I would probably pick the inside because it gets really rough outside of that curve in turn one. And sometimes you're three, four, maybe five wide. And if you get too wide right there, there's a gravel trap. So you can lose a lot of time right there. Yeah, and if you take the bottom, you're the one pushing people out of the way instead of somebody shoving you out of the way. That's it's right. Gonna, it's going to come to that. It will come to that for sure. Push will come to shove. I like the option. It was a little bit different at Atlanta. You know, you had seven guys yeah. who would pick one side just because there was an advantage, but more equal here. But I, I think Ross Chastain agrees with you guys. Well, I, I just like that you put it into the driver's decision, right? You know, it's not just I have to go here and I have to go there. It gives you an option. And, and from a driver's standpoint, anytime you can have more options, I feel like that's more fair yeah. and it gives you something to think about and, and I think the more that the driver has to think about the better off uh, the better the race will be to watch and that's I want to clear up also that's the thing with not having a stage in it just puts more uh, strategy into these crew chiefs on the box the engineers how they're going to attack this race they're going to get stage points but there's not going to be a caution and, and it just adds another page to the playbook certainly new for NASCAR, we'll do that in all three series. There will not be that green and white checker at the end of the stage finish. But as what, Michael what, mentioned, they'll still get those points. What's new is old. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> when well, we go back to about 2015. Yeah, we, we're going we're going back to how it used to be in 2015. So, but look, you know, that's that's the one thing that's great about the NASCAR mentality in, in today's world. Hey, we need to mix it up a little bit. All right, let's fix it. Yeah, or try something new, like yeah. the choose cone, here for the first time on road courses. So once again, Ross Chastain. He's got Kyle Busch to the outside. Christian Eckes, one to watch in the 19. Oh, they're stocking up. They're stocking, stocking up. up in the back. Green flag waves. They go wide. Matt Crafton was one of them. They climb up that hill. Look at that, five, six wide. Both Christian Eckes, nice restart. Three wide out of turn one. Wow, he was aggressive. There. Still there. Battle at the front, side by side. Christian Eckes putting the pressure on Ross Chastain and he does it, he takes the lead. Ross is sizing him up through the S's. You got to remain two tires at least on the red and white, making sure you don't get penalized. Once you leave this, as you can kick up some dust, as we saw there. Kevin, I'm surprised we made it two restarts through turn or two starts through turn one, and nobody's really worse for the wear. It's a lot of action, and Ross Chastain coming back to the inside, side by side. Ross wants to take that lead back just by a nose over Christian Eckes. And Zane gets around Kyle Busch. And I think he's gonna bring Carson Hosevar along with him. See Hosevar there on the right side of the screen. Look not, at these two, they can't shake each other. Not quite able to get the spot. Well, and what a great job by Christian Eckes just to put himself in position to get the lead. And it's like we talked before the, before the caution came out and, and you see him go wide right there to keep from running into the back of Ross. But this is just 
trial by fire and, and he's seeing what they are doing and knowing that, that he can keep up and knowing that he can be on the offense and make moves. And now uh, Ross has, has got by Christian, but he's still just getting a crash course in what needs to, what needs to happen. Ben Rhodes sizing up. Still there. Clear. Clear by one. Clear by one. I think it's really fun to listen to the throttle too, Kevin, just squeezing it. He wants to gun it, but you just got to be really use finesse on that gas pedal. Yeah, and you know that you see him on the inside right here. And that that's a that's a tough place to not have a pass happen because of the fact that you don't get a good get good run off the corner, so it puts you vulnerable to the trucks behind you to get a run on you to, to lose a position. So got to be pretty precise. This is a very technical racetrack, and especially with the throttle pedal, like you're saying, to make sure that, hey, what if I have to run 20 laps on, on this set of tires and take care of my tires? You can't just put the pedal down and spin the tires every time because you might have to need, you might have to have them on that truck for a long time. Kevin, you talk to these drivers, and it's all about simulation. I've been in the simulator on this track. I've turned so many laps the last two weeks. You've done that, too. So now that you get in the car, how similar, how close is the simulation to what these guys are feeling in real, real life? Well, I love it for reference points, but there's, there's nothing like having to use that throttle pedal and having to actually um, use the brake pedal as hard as you think you need to do it use it and not lock up the tires and know that you might lock up the tires and know that you might drive into the gravel trap or might um, drive off the racetrack because you you have real life consequences so in the simulator there's no consequences but it gives you great visuals and and that's the most important thing to me is is to have everything memorized look at this battle matt crafton started out back he's been able to get up toward the front lawless allen was able to get into that battle along with logan bearden in the 22. matt matt was trying to get around bearden and uh, open the door up for Allen. But he's done a nice job of fighting through the field. That 38 truck, bad fast. He's our race winner from last year. It's the exact same truck he drove to victory lane. In fact, the 38 team has won both of the races here. Ooh, Ooh. contact with Kyle Busch right there as they go side by side. This is the battle for third. I think that could be a little bit of Christian Eckes holding up Zane and Kyle got in there and said, I'm taking that spot away. Anytime you see a gap ahead of you, like uh, starting to develop with Christian, you start. You better start watching that mirror, huh? Well, the thing that I always hear you say about truck races, Mike, is there's very little give, <laughs> and there 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 has been very little give in in um, you know Christian Eckes and trying to defend his position and and do what he can do to try to keep his track position. But I believe Zane is faster than Christian. He just can't find the spot to pass. Ty Majeski holding down the sixth spot behind. Carson Hosevar, so got a nice, some nice battles inside the top 10. I'm impressed with that 98 of Ty Majeski. Didn't have much road course experience at all, and he's just put the hammer down, focused on getting better. Great qualifying effort yesterday. Now here, running in the sixth spot. There's our pole sitter from Sonoma last year, Carson Hosevar. Carson Hosevar doing double duty today, making his Xfinity Series debut. Got a call last week that team needed a fill-in driver, and uh, here he is. So he's done a lot of simulation work, to your point, Kevin. But getting that extra seat time has really helped him out here. Well, I think with with Carson, he had the he had the best tool in the garage last night with the pole sitter and Ross Chastain and. Carson has done a great job on the road courses, as, as you've said, and, and I think, you know, having, having Ross in that truck and being able to judge, and now you see Zane trying to make a move on, on Ekis on the inside here going into turn 11. We had a shot there of Raja Karuth in the 24 truck. We talked about you can't cut the S's. He was caught cutting the S's. He'll have to do a pass-through penalty. So that's something I think to keep in mind all day long. It is so tempting, isn't it? Just to just any inch you could get nearer the, the apex of the corner, you won it, and uh, Raja overdid it. As the battle for this position continues, I think Zane's got him this time. Great battle to watch right here, and Kyle Busch just watching these two duke it out. Okay, I don't think he does, does get him this time. Still there, clear behind him. Kyle Busch trying to take a look to the inside. Christian Eckes, really nice job. I mean, the guys behind him, he knows how good they are on these road courses. Nice exit there for Zane. Well, that was almost an instant replay of the lap before. Yeah. I think it's so wild you can hear the tires squealing when they go through these corners. That tells you the load that these drivers are feeling in these trucks. Yeah, and right now Zane is getting antsy. And 
He's, he's tried to pass in the, in the same spot the last two laps, and, and it hasn't worked. And Kyle's been up beside him, and Kyle's left front fender's got a little bit of, uh, it's caved in a little bit from, from getting into the side of Zane. But Zane just, he doesn't get off of turn 20 like Christian does, and then that makes it so that he has to make up the ground going into turn one, and he can't set up the pass going into turn one. So now he's under pressure from Kyle Busch under braking here in the turn one. Wouldn't Kyle being behind anybody make them antsy? You, you know one well, slip, fair. he's going to grab that spot, and he does just that. That's fair. Maybe maybe uh, Zane said, you go past him. I can't get it done. You give it a try. Working lap number seven. It's been all about Ross Chastain. He's led five laps so far, but the battle continues behind him. We'll be back from Austin. Welcome back to the Expel 225 on FS1. Jamie Little, Kevin Harvick, Michael Waltrip with you. And Ross Chastain continues to lead. He has been the standout, but this battle, wow, and Carson Osevar goes around. The 0-2 is around of Chris Wright. Oh, he's going to get stuck. He shouldn't have done that. You got to stay on the pavement. That gravel will eat you up. There's a perfect picture of what I'm talking about. Yeah, and I tell you what, Mike, the truck that was just on pit road, I don't know what truck that was, but that's going to be the leader of this. He's going to have a, a good opportunity to be the leader of this race if everybody decides to pit, but we're getting close to the end of the stage. That was a turn 11 where that took place at the end of the long back straightaway. Caution is out now for the second time. You just, oh, you just, man. You got to stay on the pavement and back up. You, you get in the gravel and you're, you're stuck, and that's what the Wild World Worldwide Express truck is. Carson yeah. Hosbar was in the top five, running fifth when that just happened. Yeah, and I bet what happened right there is he got in and the back of the truck started wheel hopping and, and, the, and, the, and the truck went around. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a tough break, and he's definitely waiting for, the, waiting for the tow truck. Let's listen to the 42 radio. I'm power steering fluid ready just in case. Copy. That's what I'm fighting in the slow section. 10-4, 10-4. Pedal to the floor, he says. Wow, he's got all kinds of problems. Power steering fluid, brake pedal to the floor. Gravel in his tires. Stuck in the gravel. It's a bad sequence right there. 
So meanwhile, pit road, all the pit crews getting ready, getting warmed up. You guys said the uh, the window opened at about lap six, so here we are, lap eight. And this is a perfect scenario for us to have fun. Oh my some goodness. guys are going to say, I got to win the stage. Some guys are going to say, I want some track position. Lap eight will allow the trucks to get all the way to the finish on another tank of gas. Let's see if we can see what happens here to Carson. Well, you see the O2, Chris Wright, get spun around there. That's T Taylor Gray that gets him, and Chase Purdy goes by in the Bama Buggies truck. And then this is what happened to Carson. You could tell just no brakes there. Yeah, he's Kevin. just he's he's just struggling with the brake pedal. When it goes to the floor, you just have uh, ah. so much that he tried to keep he it tried. going. I didn't know he didn't have any brakes. Makes you know, sense it, now, right? It, it, he couldn't stop, or he would have. Try to keep it rolling, but uh, it didn't happen. Ah, the worst spot. Good thing about this place is it takes so long to get around under caution. They they get him pulled out here. They'll get him back to pit road, and you heard it. He's going to need some help. Fix the damage. See if he can continue on. Pit stops on the other side of this break. Stay with us. You're watching the Craftsman Truck Series. Welcome back to Circuit of the Americas, where we're under caution for the second time for Carson Hosevar getting stuck on track, and he has made it to pit lane to get some service, see if they can fix that truck up and get him back out. So this means one thing. Once the pits are officially open, which they are, maybe we'll get some takers. What do you guys think? Well, let's make sure they open pit road. I think we're going to do so. And if so, we get just what we were hoping for, Kevin. A mixed bag. That's right. We're going to see 41 and 51 pit for sure, I believe. And then others will stay out and try to win the stage. Get that valuable playoff point. Get some stage points. Zane Smith was on the fence. And this is a narrow pit road. So this is a very difficult pit road to get to from a driver's standpoint if there are multiple trucks. We see the guys that you were talking about pitting. Jamie? 
for Kyle Busch. He stopped in his box as well. His crew chief for this year, Brian Patty, is very successful on road courses. He said if we can stop early, we're not going for championship points. So if we can get to the end of the race on just one more stop, we're taking all the chances. Kyle was very honest. He said he felt like that win last year was taken away from him. He wants redemption today. Also, Ross Chastain is a perfectly clean pit stop for him. Four tires fuel. Just a couple adjustments. Heather? And for Zane Smith, his crew chief Chris Lawson told me earlier that if they would get a caution in the first stage, they will take the option to pit. But he is saying right now with that race truck, that first gear drive is terrible and he's loose on the right handers and it carries him all the way through the exit. So they made some adjustments there for the 38. All right. So it was a little bit of a mixed bag. So you have we haven't messed runners. anything up yet, Jamie. Christian Eckes stays out. We'll see what happens after this. Welcome back to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, racing from Austin. Under caution right now, we had a mixed bag, as we mentioned. Christian Eckes, Ty Majeski, among those who decided to stay out. And just a reminder that the end of stage one is at lap 12, but we'll stay green. So we're trying something new here, and I like the differing strategies. I do, too. You can see the damage here on Stuart Friesen. Let's watch this last restart. Keep your eyeball on the yellow truck up there of Matt Crafton. Watch how wildly he goes off to the right. Things get stocking up. You can see Stuart Friesen, he gets hit there. And the reason why I think this is important, Kevin, this is about where our leaders are going to restart. And we know how hectic and chaotic these restarts are. You could see a good example of it right there. Well, we saw the best truck get torn up last year, Kyle Busch, on a situation like this where he had to race with other people. And now you're back in the pack and you know when you're going to turn one, you got to protect yourself and keep your truck rolling with the fender still on it. 
All right, Christian Eckes, first time Ty Majeski is restarting on the front row. Nick Sanchez and the 11 of Corey Heim in the second row. Green flag is in the air as they climb that hill into turn one. And here they go, fanning out. Look at Chastain all the way off the racetrack to the right. Christian Eckes with a flawless restart once again leads them. Good call, Jamie. That's how he got the lead. He just had a perfect restart. A little contact back there. That looked like Nick Sanchez had some contact. Lost about four positions right there. And that's a great shot because it's like a funnel. Oh, oh no. Matt Crafton gets stuck right where we just saw Carson Hosevar. Oh, he got lucky. That yeah, left rear tire up. was on the grass. <laughs> got it up on the grass. Remember Kurt Busch a couple years ago riding around on that grass trying to find some more racetrack. What's he going to do here? He looks like he's almost on an island. Yeah, he's just trying to find anything that isn't gravel to keep traction, and he's found it. Well done, Matt Crafton. That Again, was great. Grass stuffed up in there. He, uh, it looks like our golf game, Mike. <laughs> All over when the place. When you're in your opposite fairway, and you gotta, you got to figure out a place to get back across. And he even trimmed the grass for him. That was turn four where that took place, and Matt was running 11, just probably the victim of a bump gone wrong. You see... Ty Majeski chasing down Christian Eckes. How impressive has he been on these restarts? Wow. Well, Eckes he's, is He's been it. relentless. Yes. And he's done a great job even, even after the restarts and making sure that he's fast in the places where that you have the most potential to pass. And he gets off the corner really well. So Christian has been very aggressive in protecting his position. And, and now, ultimately, it puts him in a position to win this stage. Will, will Matt Crafton have to pit with that uh, grass on his grill, maybe do some overheating? See if we can see what happens to him back here. Down low. Yeah, you see Nick, Chan Nick Sanchez there get hit and go a little bit wide. And then everything kind of stacks up. Ah, and this is when, where it probably goes bad for Crafton. Oh, man. Was that Haley Deegan yeah, in the 13? Like, yeah, Haley Deegan just hit him in the left rear. That's his teammate but he did a great job of getting out of that mess. I'm just worried about overheating and that smoke I'm seeing. Been a tough day. Yeah, the tough part about those S's, you know, we're coming to turn one here, and on the start, everything funnels down into turn one, but when you come off of turn one down into turn two, it's like a funnel, it just keeps getting smaller. But when you go into those S's, it's like a rhythm. You have to hit the first curve in the right spot. And I guarantee you what happened was Haley Deegan hit that first curb wrong in turn three, and it popped her over into Matt Crafton's left rear. You just saw a hornet's nest is the best way to describe it, and Kyle Busch was right in the middle of it. Jamie? For Matt Kraft, and he is making the decision to go ahead and bring it into pit lane. He knew that he had some grass stuck in that grill, and he didn't want it to overheat. So they're taking the opportunity to go ahead and execute a full-service pit stop. They're going to give him fresh tires and top off with fuel also. Remember, he didn't qualify either. He had some tire rub issues during practice. They were not able to get those fixed on pit lane, so he missed that track time as well. So it's been kind of a messy weekend for Matt Kraft, and he had come up through the field, but this certainly sends him further back than he would like. And he has a target away there. Jamie. One thing after another, not good for the 88 camp for Matt Crafton. And there's that gaggle of trucks I talked about on board with Ben Rhodes. Kyle Busch took them three wide to grab two spots there. How about Ross Chastain in the 41 that you're looking ahead to? 17th to 8th in one lap. Man on a mission right there. There's, it there appears, there. appears there's a lot of missions going on. There's so much pushing and shoving and passing and Action. I love it. Tyler Ankrum in the 16 battling Kyle Bush right now for that ninth spot. Didn't they just name yesterday or today Tyler Ankrum Day here in Austin? I don't know, but I want to celebrate it. It's pretty special. Not very many people get their own day. Tyler's a good kid, too. From San Bernardino, California, but now he lives in North Carolina on a farm. <laughs> Wears cowboy boots all around the track. Interesting young man. He is. He's awesome. And you can see, 22 years old, best finish on the road course third here two years ago. Well, not, let's not forget we're coming to the end of, of stage one here. This is the final lap of it, and it's going to be Christian Eckes. Winner of stage one. He gets those 10 points, that extra bonus point. So strange not bringing out that caution, right? Yeah, this is kind of fun. You get to win the stage, stage point. Oh, keep on going, bud. Don't let off. 
I love it. I think it adds so much to the race. Christian Eckes, his third stage win of the season. And you see right there in that pylon, your top 10 finishers after stage one. Yeah, and what's going to happen here is it's it's going to cycle to Kyle Busch and Ross Chastain as as these guys start to get onto their strategy when they pit. So the, the next race for the lead is between Kyle Busch and Ross Chastain. And the interesting part about that story is Kyle Busch has gotten around Ross Chastain. Yeah, he forced him three wide and took that spot away. We saw, but I think uh, lap 13, as they come back to the green, or excuse me, come back to pit road, there's gonna be a lot of takers on pit road, those guys coming in and getting their service. Look at that dive there by Ross. He's able to get around Kaz Grala in that well, Island Brands number one truck. The one thing that if, if I was Christian Eckes guys, you know, obviously you're worried about the you're worried about the caution flag coming out and not being on pit road because you don't want the caution flag to come out and then have to pit because you lose so much more. So you got to decide, OK, my lap, my lap times are OK, but do I need to get on pit road right now? So I put myself in position to not get hung out with a caution. I'm, I'm pitting right now. I've got to get on pit road so that I don't lose the track position if and when the caution flies again. Kevin, I had one of the crew guys tell me, I got it figured out. We need to pit one lap before the caution comes out. Yeah. So well, how the heck do we know when that is? That's oh, perfect yeah. timing. <laughs> you, 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 look, you have to have a little bit of luck. When when you're calling these races, you, you have to have some luck go your way when, when you pit and, and the way that the cautions fall uh, in order to win these races. Hey, you know, in that top 10 we showed, the one guy that I'm very impressed with, Matt Benedetto in 10. He was one of the 11 trucks who started in the back of the field today. It was a rough day yesterday for Matty D. Nothing really went well, and yet he's able to recover with a top 10 here. And Parker Kligerman in 11th. We told you at the top of the show, keep your eye on Parker Kligerman, our most recent road course winner in the truck series. Christian Eckes is on pit road. You guys said it. It's coming your way. Jamie? And Tyler Ingram in for his stop. And this word from the crew chief was make sure you manage these tires. We're going to need them to last us for a long time. So when you get back out there, nice and smooth. Heather? The strategy is played out perfectly here for the 19 team. The crew chief, Charles tonight told me earlier their objective was to get as many stage points as possible. Obviously, they won that stage. The only complaint here for the 19 is that he said that he is free into the left-handers and losing overall lateral oh. grip, and he stalls it, so they're going to have to give him a push. Everything's been going flawless for Christian Eckes until right there. And look at this battle for the lead right now. Ty Majeski trying to hold off Kyle Busch, who has yet to lead today. And right behind him, Ross Chastain with his pursuit of Kyle Busch. Nice job by Ty Majeski making his way up to the lead of this race. You saw in that shot on pit road, the 88, Matt Crafton, they did push him back to the garage. His day is over. Now, it's, now the strategy, Kevin, is don't speed on pit road. Don't have a penalty. You put all these plays into, into, into position to turn out the way you planned it, a speeding penalty can mess that all up. Yeah, and I'm so intrigued by all that. I'm sitting here trying to think about all these scenarios in, in my head because that's and that's what's happening on the pit boxes. All the crew chiefs are trying to put them in, in, themselves in a position. And, and if you're in a position to where maybe I'm not fast enough, maybe I need to hold my track position and try to run as long as I can. Maybe maybe some of these guys fall into that category to try to push that last set of tires as late as they can. What a battle. And Kyle Busch gets around Ty Majeski and he brings Ross Chastain with him. Kyle Busch leading for the first time today. Yeah, that's a good plan, I think, for somebody that knows they don't have the speed to win the race. What if you just ran your tires all the way out on your fuel and get your last set of tires later than everyone to give you an advantage? Yeah, because right now Christian Eckes is in 31st position, right? And so he's way behind and, uh, you know, from a time standpoint. So what's the time loss for Ty Majeski to just stay out there and do the best that he can in order to maintain his track position and just try to pit with these guys? So much action so far. We have a lot more coming your way. 28 laps to go side by side. Five different leaders who will come out on top.
Welcome back to the Expel 225. Jamie Little, Michael Waltrip, Kevin Harvick with you. Heather DeBow and Jamie Howe on Pit Road. What a beautiful day. And how about the perfect that, place to watch this race? That looks scary, didn't it? Yeah, if you're afraid of heights, that is not for Don't you. Don't go there. Here's you climbed a... all the steps, didn't you, Michael? I did twice once. 410 of them. Yeah. Twice once because I lost count and I was supposed to be counting steps. <laughs> Well, Kyle Busch continues to lead here. Ross Chastain, Zane Smith, Ty Majeski. Remember, he is yet to pit. And Kaz Grawl around out the top five. Mike and I were just having an interesting debate on the 98 strategy in Ty Majeski. And it's interesting, Michael, if you run this whole stage out and then you run it again because it just has that green flag feel right now. His pace is not bad, but... He's, he's going to be in a better position, I believe, when it all cycles through because if he does, if the caution does come out and he is stuck behind Christian Eckes, which he will be because of his, his lap time, he's going to have way fresher tires. So there's, there's a few ways that this can all play out. You talked about Spark Parker Kligerman in the 75 truck. He's not disappointing you. He's marched into the top five. Let's listen to some radio from Parker's team. Doesn't that sound just like a race car driver? <laughs> Drove into the top five. We're pretty terrible, you know. Yeah, and, and, and I can see exactly why it's tight. When he tells him that it's damaged, it's it's a lot of damage. It's got some, some gap uh, at the top of the nose with the hood and the whole nose is completely caved in. So have, it's definitely not going to drive well. Have you ever been told to shut up and drive? I have. I have too. And yeah. that, that, you know, that's a moment where maybe that would have been appropriate. But uh, Parker's just trying to tell the team the best, what the truck's doing. Tires are chattering. And then they can go to work on a plan of how to fix it. I like the response, though. We have a little damage. Yeah. We're going to be all right. <laughs> yeah. From where they're standing, they're doing a great job. That is the little team that could that Parker Kligerman is driving for. And how about Haley Deegan coming off her best finish of the year of 12th last week at Atlanta here running in the top 10? Yeah, great job. She had that bit of contact with Crafton. Um, but other than that, and I think she got some damage on that restart we look back at. She's had a pretty smooth day. A lot of damaged trucks. Getting heated up there by Lawless Allen. Allen's doing a nice job as well. Lawless Allen. Look at all that damage to her truck, Kevin. Yeah, and that particular damage is interesting, Mike. You've been in that scenario before because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's good damage, and, and I don't believe that's going to be good damage, but sometimes when you can get some air onto the right front tire and, and keep it cooler in, in these situations where the tires fall off, but I believe that that fender is much more important yeah. aerodynamically here than, than that tire being cool. I hear you, though. That's, that's interesting. You can see that she's struggling to stay ahead of Lawless. So Lawless Allen, his first name is unique, right? Mm -hmm. It's his grandmother's maiden name. And as he says, we're not some wild motorcycle gang. It's actually <laughs> my grandmother's name, maiden name. So Lawless Allen doing a really nice job here in the top 10. Got to run there. Can he get the job done? Looks like he's going to make the move. Oh, and he's going to hit oh, Kaz. <laughs> that was so close. Haley says, not so fast. I'm still here. She hangs on to that ninth spot. Jamie? For Lawless Allen, he ran an endurance race here with Daniel Suarez, of all people, as his co-driver, just to get some more track time, some experience around Circuit of the Americas. And he said it's really paid off, but what's actually making a big difference is just the chemistry with that team. They're starting to show the speed that they have, and they're working a lot better together than they did last year, and they have a better understanding of what Lawless needs behind the wheel. What? This is when you overshoot the corner to make a pass. He's hung down there low and tried to complete it. And look how lucky Kaz Grawl is and doesn't even know it, I don't think. Yeah, and it looks like Lawless right at the last <laughs> second said, oh, I need another spike of the brake right here. I'm going to hit that truck. So he's he's getting frustrated because Haley's doing a little bit of blocking and, and he's getting frustrated because he knows his truck is faster. So he's taking more chances to, to try to gain the position and do what he needs to do to get by. That's a strong move up on the outside of Haley. You drivers don't get frustrated, do you? Well, we saw earlier when Kyle Busch and Chastain were battling with that because, you know, they couldn't get the pass done. So it's just really difficult unless the other driver makes a mistake to make those moves. The battle continues for Haley Deegan. Lawless Allen side by side. How much are you leaning on your spotter here, Kevin, to finish this move off and listen to if you got room or not to close the door? Still there. Well. 
At this point, well, I'm, not, I'm not listening to my spotter. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my leaning on the door uh, to, to finish this pass and, and make some of those exits wide or breaks um, a little bit deeper on the entry and make sure that it's right next to the door. So he, he's definitely getting right, desperate. Clear by two and a half. Did you see that nice little move Haley did? She kind of bumped him up out of the way with her back bumper. Just a quick update, the 88 of Matt Crafton did go to the infield care center. He has been checked and released. He's out for today. Spencer Boyd as well. The truck had some issues yesterday. Stephen Parsons actually qualified the truck and his day is over. Man, it's a tough weekend for that team. Well, Haley made a little bit of room and Lawless took advantage of it, completed that pass. Now he's gonna go try to run down Kaz Grala. Yeah, and one lap ago, they were right on Kaz Grala's bumper, and, and really it cost them both a whole bunch of time. So it's it's a real balance of, of I need to let this driver go so that we don't lose as much time as as they just lost. And, um, you know, that's that's what happens here. You go back and you watch these races as a, as a young truck driver, and you probably, probably would say in that situation, if you were Haley, I should have just let him go so we didn't lose so much time to the people in front of us. And this is what we hope for, right? We, we hope that these guys would be about the same speed, Kyle hey. Busch and, and Ross Chastain, if they were going to be the ones at the front of the field because we thought they'd be, be quick, but I love the fact that they're close and they're going to have to race each other all the way to the end here. Nice battle for fifth, Parker Kligerman. You got Ben Rhodes side by side. Kligerman, such a wheel man on these road course races. He's got double duty coming up. That's a lot of driving in one day. As you mentioned, Kevin, too, it is the first hot weekend we've had. Well, the trucks in the Xfinity cars are way hotter than the cup cars. They, every time I ever drove a truck or an Xfinity car, I would get out of it and go, oh my goodness, that, <laughs> I, I forgot how hot, the, hot these trucks and, and Xfinity cars were. So that'll be a long day. I talked about Nick Sanchez in the opening, solid top 10 for him so far, tracking there just behind the veteran and road course winner, Ben Rhodes, and road course winner, Parker Kligerman. So Nick's getting some lessons here. Nobody works harder. That young man, 100% dedicated to his craft, to getting better, to learning this team, and it's shown. He's qualified in the top five, all four races this year, running up front. He's led some laps, and he's just doing a nice job adjusting to the truck series. You see there, Kyle Busch, Zane Smith, Ross Chastain, all up 17 spots. We know they have fast trucks, but what about Lawless Allen? He's gained 13 spots since this race restarted, and that's a great job for him. Ooh, there's a the move. Side by side, once again, they can't shake each other. Ross Chastain, the 51 there, Kyle Busch. This battle's out there fun. Again, out there, out there. That is out there. I bet you there's a lot of respect. Don't you think, Kevin, between these two right now, they both know they've got everything it takes to win the race and just racing hard against each other. Well, neither neither one of them wants to lose the, the time to each other. They both want to be in control of the race for whatever reason, you know, just to keep everything cooler and not having to follow a truck. And you can see Kyle got in the dirt right there. Heather? And Nick Sanchez sure is having a good run so far. The only thing he said that he's struggling with right now is the front turn of that number two truck. But we also have an issue for the number 19 of Christian Eckes, our stage leader. He's been telling the team that he's having power steering issues with that number 19, so he's bringing it down pit road right now. They did say they're going to have to take a look at it here and to have a power steering belt ready, and they're going to go under the hood for the 19. They're also going to put some fuel on it. That's a tough break there. Such a good truck. Well, that's the second one, Mike. We heard Carson Hosevar talk about his power steering issues, too, so you wonder if it's just the heat or if there's a common problem with everything that's happening. I think the pit road window will open for some of the guys like Chastain and Kyle Busch in about three to four laps. It'd be interesting to me though, Kevin, if they don't run it out a little bit further, if they choose to just run it out further because they want to have fresher tires at the end. You yeah. said it earlier and I couldn't agree more. It just has a real green flag feel to it. And you got to have good tires at the end if you can figure it all out. Yeah, well, Ty Majeski is the guy whose fuel window is definitely going to open probably this lap. He has not pitted at all yet. One of three trucks that has yet to pit today. That's 19 laps. Talking in the garage area, 19 to 21 laps. They think they could go, but of course you got to consider they had the parade laps uh, before the green flag, but there's also been some caution laps. I think it's about time to come here. It is, you guys called it, Ty Majeski. 
He's coming your way, Heather. And for Ty, he's been quiet on the radio so far, but the team has been telling him he's doing a great job and just to keep up the good work. So they're going to go ahead and come in for their scheduled stop right here. And his crew chief, Joe Shear, they did not want to pit under caution. So this is working out as part of their strategy as well. Now you just don't want to make any mistakes. Nice smooth pit stop. Don't speed on pit road. Keep that strategy in play. I believe he's all set to go to about lap 40, maybe 38, and have those fresh tires like we talked about. He's in a very unique position, but the, the, the one thing that they will be reminding him of right here is he needs to go. He's got to lay down you know, as fast a lap as possible to try to gain the time. If the, if the leaders that he was racing around, the trucks that he was racing around, he needs to make sure that he puts in as many lap, fast laps as possible. But he's come out in a very unique position right in the middle of the pack, which kind of takes some of that away because you can't you can't lay those laps down like you need to. Well, it was interesting, and I think it was Ty Majeski's team that told me yesterday the max they can do on fuel is 22 laps. He just pitted there. We've got about 21 laps left in this race, so they could be on it, maybe a little short. What do you think, Michael? Maybe just a little short, but, you know, when you start stretching, you're changing your gears a little bit lower RPM, you could save some of that fuel, but I just believe there's going to be more pit stops. I think that probably isn't going to play out to have that old of tires on at the end of the race. But the unique position that it puts Majeski in is the fact that all those guys are going to come in and put their last set of tires on. And, and if they have to, they're going to have to pit sooner under green than, than what he's going to have to. So he's got more options. Dive there. The 46 of Dale Quarterly. You saw him make a big move there. Here comes Nick Sanchez around Grant Enfinger. Look at this mess. Quarterly's done a nice job. I think that's him in the middle there. Isn't that the 46 truck? He had an early pit stop, but he's battled back in that white and red truck. Yeah, Majeski and, and Sanchez both just pitted, and they came out in the middle of these trucks in traffic, and they want nothing more than to do exactly what Ty <laughs> just did, to clear these trucks that are slower than, than they are to make lap time while the tires are new. Oh. You know, Problems you, continue there. That's Christian Eckes. They're still looking under the hood. And Eckes was so strong early on, led three laps, won the first stage. But Yeah, the, he'll be thankful for that first stage win. That, that yeah. heals a few wounds. There's Ben Rhodes making his way down pit road. Heather? And for Ben Rhodes earlier in the day, he was not happy with his qualifying effort, and he said he did not like starting the race that far in the back. It's hard to make track position, but here he is pitting from that seventh spot. They're going to go ahead and add four tires and fuel for him as well, and then they'll send him back out on off pit road. Really interesting to look at this top ten right now and how things have shaken out. I see Stuart Friesen just entered the top ten for the first time today. He had some damage early on in this race. There's Haley with that damage, but still soldiering on in the seventh position. Just got passed by Kaz Grala. And then there's Stewart. We talked about his problems in Caden Honeycutt. You got to give it up for Caden. He's done a nice job. He's worked his way inside the top 10. And right behind him, Raja Karuth. He was the first one that was penalized for cutting the course through the S's. So he's worked his way up. Logan Bearden in the 22. He's been fun to watch today. A lot of good stories of guys and ladies that have raced their way inside the top 10. This story of Logan Bearden, I love it. He's a mechanic for AM Racing in the trucks and the Arkham Menard series. And once again, getting a shot here to show what he's capable of. And the reason why he's taking those other jobs and being a mechanic is to be here today. So doing a really nice job there for Bearden back there in the 12th spot. Mike, look at this. Kaz Grawl has not pitted yet. And we've run 21 that, laps. Yeah, that puts, him, that puts him in a position to just one stop, one it, right? stop if, it, if this thing does something crazy and goes green. I love this story, too. You're talking about good stories. The CarQuest truck here of Caden hey, Honeycutt. He's a Texas driver, a teenager, and his team is really high on him. He's, he's got so much ability, sort of under the radar at times, but does a really nice job. And here in his home state, running inside the top 10, and he's already pitted. Uh, on a pretty normal strategy. This is a great day for this team. Caden Honeycutt started this race 24th. He's from Willow Park, Texas. One of three drivers from Texas in the field. And here's a battle again for the lead. <laughs> Love there. this. Kyle Busch in the 51, trying to win on a road course for the second time in his career. And Ross Chastain in the 41 has never won on a road course in the truck series. This battle is awesome. Seeing these two going toe to toe. 
make sure you don't cut the corners there in the S's. I, that's that's got to be hard. Jamie, how these guys are really battling. What's happening down on pit road with Kaz Grala? Well, Kaz Grala has finally made this stop on pit lane right at the halfway mark, as you said. Seth Smith had the crew from Tricon Garage up on the wall at the ready, but I was watching his lap times. That last lap, he was already half a second slower than the lap before, which was already three and a half seconds off the pace of the leaders, and it all comes down to how fresh those tires are. Their intention is to go to the end of the race. They're going to have some severe drop off when they get there. Thank you, Jamie. Well, we talked about at the beginning of the show, Jamie Little, that the strategy, strategies would be all over the board. And, and I think that we uh, called that pretty well because we've seen a lot of that. Check out how Kyle gets the lead. Well, it appears that, that these trucks have kind of swapped. It, it seems like Ross's truck is starting to fall off and Kyle just got a heck of a run off the last corner and drove by him. Yeah, I looked at the lap times two laps ago. Uh, Ross was a half a second faster, but then the last time by, Kyle was a second faster than Ross, so something's going on there. It's Ross, Ross is fading. wonder what's going on. It's about time for a pit stop. I think about lap 24 is what uh, the team told me they thought they might pit. Yeah, and he, he, he could possibly be in a position of, of saving fuel in order to try to get himself to a particular spot. Um, we're hearing that he has a, a fuel pressure issue, so that would explain the sudden drop off down the straightaway when Kyle just drove by him. Certainly. There he goes. Is that Daniel Dye? Daniel Battling? Dye in the 43. One of the trucks that started in the back of the field today. First road course race for him. 41 is coming your way, Jamie. And Ross Chastain clean in. He hit the marks. The team was ready for him. I was listening to him right now, and he said, uh, we're not trying not to spend a whole lot of time here, so make this work quick. They went ahead and topped him off. I don't see like there's any worry um, in, in any issue that he may potentially have. They're just making sure he's cool. So Ross Chastain's service is finished. The question now, when does Kyle Busch pit? I think it's going to be pretty soon, but we won't miss it no matter when it is. We won't miss it. We're going side by side. Keep it right here from Coda. Well, Kyle Busch decided not to pit that lap. He continues leading this race. We welcome you. 18 laps to go here at Circuit of the Americas. Kyle Busch, it's been a good day. He's already led nine laps today. Jamie? 
His crew chief, Brian Patty, had called him to pit lane on that last lap. There was a little bit of a discussion over the radio on whether or not it was the best time. He's turning consistent lap times right now. So they told him you have six laps maximum. That's the most you can stay out there on fuel right now. So eyes are open. The crew's ready for him. It's going to come down to Kyle when he fixes time. That's the man making the call. Brian Patty on the pit box right there. Yeah, and he's 2.6 seconds slower than his fast lap. So there, there's definitely some fall off late in the run. Daniel Dye on pit road getting service there. There's Kyle Busch making his way. It sounds like a little bit of a debate between the crew chief and the driver about what the best strategy might be. And as the crew chief, when you got the owner of the team in the truck, I guess you kind of have to listen to him, right? Well, they're in, a, they're in an okay spot because of being the leader and losing less time. I mean, the, the only person that was close to them racing, I guess, would be Zane and, and um, Ross Chastain. Um, but we don't know exactly what what is happening with the Chastain truck. Did he have a fuel pressure issue? Did they not get a full fuel? So we don't know that he can actually go all the way to the end. And Ross Chastain shown in eighth right now. So Kyle Busch has a four second lead over Zane Smith. Parker Kligerman has driven his way up through the field. He's in third. Lawless Allen and Stuart Friesen now joins the top five. And Jamie, if you look back to Ross Chastain in eighth, he's 40 seconds behind Kyle. It takes about 45 seconds to make a pit stop and get from one end of pit road to the other. So that means when the cycle ends, Ross is gonna have an advantage. Now we have the question about what's the situation with this fuel pressure. Jamie? Well, I just checked with Mike Kilman Jr., the crew chief, and he said they did have a slight fuel pressure issue before they came to pit lane. I mentioned during that pit stop, they were making sure it was full. They went back, grabbed the second can of gas of it. Mike said they are confident that they got it all the way topped off. So that's good news, right? Maybe his problems are in the past. They think they got it full. So Ross Chastain should be good to go. Yep. As we continue to wait for the 51 when they decide to pit. Well, Mike, don't you think there has to be some sort of conversation in Kyle Busch's mind to say, okay, if we do get a caution at the end, I want to I want to be in control of having a little bit better tire. Yeah, and I think that we know that he could pit now and make it, and we thought that, but with with not needing the points, he might take advantage of that. But I think with the fall off on the tires, Kyle has decided behind the wheel of that truck, I need to run these tires on out and have fresher ones than Ross, which could be a big advantage. He's already run a couple more laps or has Ross, so we'll see how this plays out. Well, Kyle ran a 217.9 the last lap, um, the lap before, and the last lap was a 218.5. So he's definitely, the times are definitely falling off. And I'm wondering, and you tell me, Kevin, are, are some of the drivers that have pitted, are they maybe taking it a little bit easier on their tires so they don't burn them up right now and have a little bit left for later? That's a great question. Because, you know, you look down, you look down the leaderboard here and you've got Ben Rhodes who ran a 216.70, you've got Majeski 17.5. So Kyle's in, Kyle's in clear track. So it's, it's, it's interesting to think that he would, I would be surprised if he, if he was not going as fast as he could go. Final lap of stage number two, Kyle Busch in the 51. He will take the win. 5.2 seconds behind Zane Smith for second and Parker Kligerman. Lawless Allen with a nice fourth position. Oh no, something's wrong with Parker Kligerman. Just before the start finish line, he is slow on the racetrack. Heather. Zane Smith decided to do opposite what the 51 did. So they're on pit road right now. He said that truck is better in the faster parts of the track, but not as good in the slower areas. They said if Kyle Busch did not stay out there, they would have stayed out to get the stage points, but they decided to go opposite the 51 here. Thank you, Heather. And Parker Kligerman, there you see him. He was running third at the time. Tough break. Well, we see the 98 truck made it to pit road before they closed pit road. And will this bring out a caution? He can't. Has to. I can't see him getting up that hill. Do you? Yeah, something smoking in here. Electrical. Ah, what a tough break. See the top 10 in the pylon on the la left-hand side. Oh, man. Caution is out. 
And that is worst case scenario for <laughs> Kyle Busch. <laughs> oh, me. But Absolute worst case. He's got a fast truck. We know he can drive the wheels off of it, and he's going to have great tires. So we'll see if he can overcome this break. Patty wanted to get to pit road for just this case, in case the caution come out before they got there. Kyle elected to stay out. We'll see if that plays out to be in his favor. Yeah. There's Brian. Oh, there went a pair of glasses. I don't think he's very happy about that. Uh, the, guy, the guy who came out perfect in this is Zane Smith. Mm -hmm. He pitted, was on pitted pit perfectly. road when the caution came out, and he still finished second in the stage. And the reason why he was on pit road was because Kyle stayed out to win the stage. Zane said, I don't need the points as bad as I need track position. He came to pit road, and now he's going to have the same tires as Kyle Busch, but yet better track position. And I guarantee if we go on the 98 uh, spotter, channel and and listen to the radio communication there they were probably talking about that 75 truck being there and they were telling their driver i guarantee they were telling their driver watch the light watch the light get to pit road if you can and he did chris lawson the crew chief for this truck for zane smith he is such a good dude such a great guy i went down and talked to him this morning i, I showed him my ideas of what strategy might look like. He said, yeah, they might look like all that. You're right, Mike. And it might look like a whole bunch of other things as well. And this caution flag is a great example of why he said that. Absolutely. Well, they've won the last two races here with two different drivers, Todd Gilliland two years ago, and then Zane Smith last year. So we'll see if this strategy will work out for him. Multiple things happen at one time, and this oh. is what happened here. Wow, they were running in the top 10. Yeah, and you saw Haley's truck start to bounce right there. And what happens when, when you get too low right there, it just gets rougher and rougher. And then her entry to the corner was just super straight. And the truck just went straight under braking. How about Caden Honeycutt? Just gassed it through the gravel there, made his way back out. Haley's definitely had an eventful day. Spent some time in the top 10. Had some damage on her truck. Had another issue right there. So the way this is going to work out is Zane Smith is going to be the leader with the freshest tires. Chastain's got three laps less on his tires. And then let's see, we've got, uh, oh, we've got Parker on fire. Or at least smoking really bad. All right, get him out of there. I think he's getting out anyway. And Parker Kligerman had issues in qualifying yesterday, which led them to change the engine and go to the back today. Drove his way all the way up to third and an issue for Parker Kligerman. His truck series day is over. He'll be in the Xfinity series coming up later. Kyle Busch leads the field here.
Welcome back, welcome back. Right here was where it's at. I don't need a match, I don't need a lighter, but we on fire, that's a fact. Now you can say I'm out the box, but I will say I'm in my bag. You can't stop me from getting hot, but if they ask, we don't. The Circuit of the Americas. Well, two out of the three of us are in here dancing. You don't Come got on, that Kevin. right. I'm thinking. I'm, I'm so geeked out about all of this pitch <laughs> strategy. I can't hardly take it because I think we have to give credit to Chris Lawson, Zane Smith's crew chief, for making the call that he did. He came down pit road. He's got new tires. He's going to be the leader. He pitted and he finished second in the stage. And then when you look at Ty Majeski and everything that, that he has done with his pit sequence, all came down to communication with the spotters and telling their driver, get to pit road, get to pit road. Finally, Kyle Busch is in the pits. Jamie. We saw Brian Patty visibly upset, but he remained composed over the radio with Kyle. Kyle ultimately apologizing, saying he was sorry. He was trying to figure out what the tire life was like, and to the best of his ability, he thinks they have 12 to 15 laps before they see any fall off. We have 15 to go. He said, I'm going to do the work. Wallace Allen up pit lane, a little bit of a different story. It's a different attitude. His crew chief, Wally Rogers, said, don't worry about anything. We're running our own race. We're doing a solid job. No adjustments for him. Heather? And Haley Deegan's also in when she was under caution there. She said the truck was sputtering just a little bit, so they might have been getting close on fuel. They're going to take the time here, too, to fix the damage on the right front of that 13. So five of the top 10 had to pit there. And 41 of Ross Chastain, they came to pit oh, road, man. must still be working on that fuel pressure issue. They thought they had it squared away, but obviously there's still issues. Yeah, and that's what worried me earlier when they were talking about having to pit, and, and we saw the truck shut off going down the straightaway. So that's why we were asking so many questions. We, we thought there might be something here, and obviously the team didn't lead us down that road completely, but something had to go wrong. Isn't that kind of not, fun to be getting in the bed of your truck? That's not something I've ever seen. <laughs> Very interesting. They're working on it too bad because uh, he had a great day. Yes, ask him if it helped filling it up. Did it with fuel help it at all? No. Did not make any difference. Did not help it. Did not. Stevie Reeves, the spotter, trying to get the communication between Mike Hillman Jr. and Ross. And the, the question was simple. Did the filling it up with fuel help anything? And Ross said it did not. And I watched his lap times. They were visibly, like they were probably a second off of what he had been running. So issues in the bed of his truck. Ross Chastain, class of the field and qualifying, set a new track record, started the day on pole at 10 laps. Had a heck of a battle going with Kyle Busch, but things have gone sideways for this team. Hey, coming up next, it's the NASCAR Xfinity Series. They'll tackle the twists and turns of Coda. Stay tuned and see all the excitement and every heart pounding lap. That's next on FS1. So if you like what you see now, stay tuned. We have a lot more action coming your way. I like it. This has been a fun day. Appreciate you joining us, Kevin. Well, I'm glad to be here. I know where I'll be for the next one. <laughs> Laying on the couch watching, relaxing. <laughs> My Foster. wife, I hope, is not listening. <laughs> He's doing great. He's yep. doing great. It's hard work. There's Zane leading the way. I was going to say Darren Foster is our director today. Showed us some dogs. He knows that's always one of my favorite things to see. See him splitting that choose area. You and said like, it's kind of difficult to see the choose out there, huh, Kevin? It is, and, and it will probably become easier after I, I do that once or twice and, and under caution. I was, I was just trying to pick it up during green flag, but uh, there will be some, some signs on the wall. You can see the two triangles over here. Um, to the left, I'll circle them. This is to help the the drivers uh, recognize where that that uh, line is on the racetrack. They put some some signs up on the wall to help for blind guys like me. <laughs> hey, there's a few of you that race with glasses now. I think I started a new trend. You did. Yeah. Because Joey does, and I actually saw Kyle Busch do it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and, and the funny part is Tony Stewart went through the whole glasses scenario a few years ago, and he used to he used to hide them in his car, and they'd put the window net up, and then he'd put his glasses on and close his shield. I have no I have no worries about hiding anything. If I can see better, I'm happy. Just means you're experienced. That's what I'm going with. Yeah. What the 17 of Taylor Gray having a heck of a birthday run. Raja Karuth in the 24. Just his fourth race 
here of his full-time season. Really nice. He's come back from that penalty for cutting the course earlier today. But it's been all about Zane Smith. Everything, as you mentioned, Kevin and Michael, win his way on that last round of stops, that last caution. What in the world has happened? We were Kyle Busch, Ross Chastain, running away with this race. Zane Smith was was third, but all of a sudden you look at the you look at the the front of the field and we don't see Ross Chastain or Kyle Busch. But I can tell you going into turn one, we know Zane Smith's truck is really good, but we have not seen Ben Rhodes up front. We know he's aggressive. Kaz Grawl, he all he wants to do is win. And Taylor Gray, we know he's gonna he's probably gonna go for it based upon everything I've I've watched at the, him race in the past. I think this is going to be a really fun restart with Kyle Busch back in the 16th position. You know, he He's said he had, he said he had to apologize to yeah. Brian Patty about what he did. Watch this guy go. He's going to try to get all those. He'll probably try to pop, get about 10 of them down into turn one. He's down on the inside. This is a great view. Zane Smith, Ben Rhodes starting on restarting on the front row for the first time. Kaz Grala, Taylor Gray. Green flag is out once again as they climb that hill into turn right one. Your door Kyle's you back. back in row eight, the black truck that ducks out there to the inside. And then the battle for the lead. Look, Look. at that, four wide. Yeah, and Taylor Gray didn't get going right there, and, and whoever restarted behind him didn't lift. Uh, had him sideways and then said, okay, buddy, you blocked me. I'm going to dive it in right here, and I'm going to use your door to make sure I make the corner. What about Kyle? Three wide in the middle. As they go through the S's, that won't work. Kyle Busch restarted back there in 16th. Oh, and Stuart Friesen gets into the side of, fly, of Dale Quarterly in the 46, and Corey Heim takes advantage of it in the 11. There's Kyle just ahead. Stuart bumps Heim as they battle. Sense of urgency, 13 laps to go here at Circuit of the Americas. Zane Smith leads him, Ben Rhodes second, and there is just a gaggle of trucks back here battling around that 10th spot. Yes, there are. A gaggle is the best word I could think of. This is a mess. Side by side, Chase Purdy with his boss right behind him. Kyle Busch up a handful of positions since that restart. He gets on the inside of Purdy, grabs a couple more spots. Well, and for us, we're, we're lucky that, that we get to watch this because when you when you get someone like Kyle Busch who, who knows that they were on the, the wrong side of making a decision on the on the opposite end of the of the crew chief's decision and wants to make it up, it becomes ex exciting passes just like we saw two at a time, and he's going to continue to do that 22 oh. around. Logan Bearden had a great day going. Go, go, go. So go, go, go. Get it refired. We'll stay green here. He can sit there for a while to try to get it fired because it's such a long lap. That's I like this track map. You can see where Kyle Busch in the 51 is. That was turn 15 where Bearden had it go wrong. There's Zane with a nice little gap back to Majeski. That time back, Kevin Zane was two tenths faster than Majeski. Probably really comfortable out in the lead right now. Yeah, and, and for Zane, that was a tenth of a second slower than his fastest lap of the race. So that clean air and new tires and everything that he's learned throughout the day has kept him on pace with, with what was his fastest lap of the day. Kyle Busch now well into the top 10. Hammer down. This is... Uh... This is fun to watch. And I know these younger drivers who are around Kyle, they like having him in the field so they can watch, they can learn. This is a perfect scenario right here. That 51 truck just makes his way around in seventh spot now, trying to get around Tanner Gray in that 15. It's a good looking Mobile One truck, isn't it, Kevin? Yeah, Mobile One's done a great job this weekend. I've got a beautiful all white Mobile One Ford Mustang. Kyle Busch goes to the inside of Tanner Gray, and he'll make it stick, takes over that sixth spot. Well, and he knows he has to go because right now he's six seconds behind the leader, and if there's no caution, he's, he's pretty toast. Much, yeah, he's, he's pretty much toast. Look at this battle. Raja trying to hold off Majeski. Good job by Raja. He started off in his truck series career at St. Louis, finished 11. I said, this kid's got it going on. Been a tough start to the season this year with some DNFs, 
some not the greatest performance, but day he's got it going on. Young driver out of Washington, D.C. Good to see him doing well. Zane Smith continues to lead. 12 laps to go here in Austin. Welcome back to Circuit of the Americas. Zane Smith continues to lead. Ben Rhodes and Kyle Busch picked up another couple of spots. He's back there in third. Zane just ran his fastest lap of the race. What do you think about that, Kevin? I, I, I love it because I want him <laughs> to go as fast as he can because Kyle Busch is coming. We need as big a lead as possible. Right now he's 6.2 seconds ahead, but rhythm. This, this racetrack is so much about rhythm and how you use the throttle pedal and everything that comes with it, so. Nice move there by Tyler Ankrum. He was able to get on the inside of Taylor Gray. The leader just crossed the finish line. That means we've reached our Craftsman 10 laps to go. And that seems like such a short amount of time. But you know what, guys? It's over 20 minutes. That's right. I was just thinking like 10 laps at Bristol. Yeah. That's two minutes. Yeah. It took me a while to add that up in my head. That was pretty good. It was a little slow. That's why I had to pause. Okay. Well, and I just kind of made up two minutes at Bristol. I think that's about right. It seems like it. Something. It depends on which car you're driving. <laughs> well, remember, this circuit here is 3.4 miles, 20 turns. So it takes a while. So stick with us. Plenty more racing, I think, is what Kevin was getting at. I was out on the track this morning, and I'm telling you, I have so much respect for the drivers anyway, but by the time I was about on turn 13 or 14, I'm like, where the heck am I? <laughs> How much more is left? I gave away a car this morning, Jamie. All right, here we go, Mike. Tell us where we're going. Do you know where we're at? Yeah, we're going down the back straight. Okay. We just tur left turn 11. Fastest part of the racetrack as they enter turn 12, 160 miles per hour. How cool is that? 160 down to what, 40? Do you see what's straight ahead? A Ferris wheel. I like it when they have those at the track. Oh yeah, and by the way, that's the leader up there that he can barely see. Zane, this, Zane Smith with about a four second lead over Ben Rhodes and then Kyle Busch back there six seconds behind. Let's listen to Ben Rhodes' radio. We should be able to make it with that caution that was out there, right? Copy. 
Did I hear that correct, Mike? Yeah. But they're in trouble. They pitted on lap 21. We thought that was a bit pushing it to get all the way to the end. Man. So if we make it to the regularly scheduled distance, they believe they will be okay in that Ben okay. Rhodes cam. I heard that wrong. The great, the great thing about that camera view is you hear the engine and the rev limiter and all that stuff happening over the bumps and, and gosh, that's just that's a that's a great view because it puts into perspective how violent it actually is. But this guy, Zane Smith in, in the 38, he he is just smooth as glass, running fast lap times. He fell off a little bit that lap, but just needs to put solid lap in, lap after lap after lap, and he'll be fine. Let's get an update on the leader, Heather. And Kevin, you just mentioned it. Zane Smith out there, really comfortable here on these road courses. He told me earlier this weekend that it's almost like an off weekend for him. These, this type of racing is like second nature for the 38. And now they are updating him on where Kyle Busch is on the course. They just said he was about two tenths faster that lap, but they're telling him to focus on his marks and hitting them precisely. Jamie Howe? The last two laps, Kyle Busch is turning lap times that are quicker now than Zane Smith's. This is the sweet spot of this tire life that he was talking about. This is why he made that decision not to pit when his crew chief, Brian Patty, told him to make that pit stop. He wanted to real, he wanted to figure out what it was he was going to have at the end of the race. Let's we'll see if he can make up the time now. It's, it's closing down. It's down below six seconds. We'll see. Well, Kyle was on fire there when he restarted 16th. He's made his way up to third, but hard to make up some ground here on these front two but drivers he's not going to catch zane without a caution yeah but he certainly is going to make it interesting i i, I shouldn't say that zane makes one it mistake could tank <laughs> but you know we saw ross's truck uh, he had the fuel issue earlier we thought he was tanking but we've seen some of these trucks kyle bush's truck at the end of that last run it just tanked and and he lost a second 1.2 seconds of lap time so you never know yeah, I shouldn't say he's not going to catch him because Kyle Busch does special things and one slip by Zane Smith and, you know, he's right there. You know, we get asked this a lot. If you look at those windshields, some have the black background of Craftsman, some have the red. The red means they're full time in the series. If it's black, like on Ross Chastain's truck, that means they're part time. So that's just for the viewer to distinguish who's running for points and who's just here to have fun and win. Well, I learned something. Thank you for explaining that. You're welcome. There's that beautiful flyover we heard just a little bit ago, right, Michael? Yeah, I love the flyover. I've never seen it happen on lap 30, but it was still fun. <laughs> Practicing for tomorrow, I believe. There's Ross. He's rallied up to the 11th position after his issues on pit road. The guy's in the bed of the truck. Just ahead there of Nick Sanchez, Stuart Friesen. Got some good stories inside the top 10. Kaz has surfaced into the fifth position in his truck. Just outside the top 10, there's Ross. Tyler Ankrum in the 16, found his way back to the top 10. Raja Karuth, Tanner Gray, Corey Heim in ninth, and Taylor Gray. Yes, they are brothers. That rounds out the top 10. But Kevin, this leader, Zane well, Smith, you know, he last year, people didn't realize his background was in karting on road courses. So when he came here, he wanted to show people what he's capable of. And he did. He went to victory lane. But you're familiar with this kind of background. Yeah, Zane and I had a conversation a, a few months ago, really into last year. And I had no idea, but he, he's on the same, Keelan is on the same path that, that uh, Zane went on. And that is kart racing in Europe and, you know, doing it at a level of, in, on the international level, that is a that is a firm commitment. So he has a huge background in, in road racing and has a great upbringing in carts. And his crew chief is great at the strategy call as well. So it's yeah. all working for Zane Smith. I love that he got second in the stage, pitted, got his track position, got his tires. Everything worked perfectly. That's always the question. Can you have it all? Yes, he well, did. And that's what we talked about earlier, right? You have to have a little bit of luck and have to have the cautions and things fall your way to win these races. So the only thing that can make it go the wrong way right now is another caution flag. So this is the battle heating up here for second. Ben Rhodes has a mirror full of Kyle Busch. He got to Rhodes in a hurry, Jamie, but he just hasn't been able to do anything with him yet. Ben's doing a really nice job wearing our driver's eye cam and has that thing right up there in the second spot. And then there's Ty Majeski back in the fourth spot. Just steady and consistent, not really a road racer, but just there all day long. Solid day. They made a great, great adjustment to their strategy. And, and here he, 
here he sits running fourth, and that would be a that'd be a great day. And sometimes that's just what you want to achieve on the road courses. Let's put ourselves in position to have a solid day, get a little bit off strategy, do something different, but then just don't make any mistakes when we when we have things fall our way and, and we put ourselves in the top five. And that's exactly what Ty Majeski and his team have done. Such a great story with Ty Majeski last year, first time full time in the series and he made it to the championship four and when you look at a driver like him his background is not road course racing and he figures it out and he finds a way to be fast and be good no matter where we race and that's what it takes to win a championship so i would say right now ty majeski is one of those favorites going he's a racer him. oh Absolutely. He's, that's exactly what you're saying he's he's just a hardcore racer and can drive anything good battle here for second Got to be looking left. Got to run. Tight. I'll push all over Ben Rhodes. Wow, Ben drove it in that corner deep. I thought Kyle had the spot. See on that map exactly where the leader is, the 38, and then where Kyle Bush is in the 51. Yeah, and in, in theory, Kyle Bush, you know, he's got what? It says seven laps, but he's probably got five. In, in theory, he should have a pretty easy time getting by. There he is, but side Ben's by side. Tough. Looked like a little contact there, but Kyle sure. Bush gets him. Kyle moves into second. Ben Rhodes back to third. What about the spotter? Anya hitting you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> he's past you. Contact. Eight tires are better than four. That's Clear. right. <laughs> That's a good run, though, for Ben. He won See Daytona that. road course, so we know he can get it done on any type of track kid from Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, and Kyle lost a little bit of time getting that position, but on the last lap, he was a half a second faster than Zane Smith. Heather? And I mentioned earlier today how Ben Rhodes was not happy with how he qualified and was frustrated with how he did in practice, but he did tell me one thing that he had on his side is he is very comfortable with this racetrack. He knows where to hit his marks. He did, however, say there's a couple different sections that you could do and hit differently, so he doesn't feel like he's ever found that money lap type of run on any of his uh, races here at Coda, but today it sure looks like he might have figured something out. Absolutely, and Zane Smith just crossed the start finish line. That means six laps to go. I'm in conservative mode if I'm Zane Smith, and if I'm Daniel Dye, I'm pretty proud of what I've accomplished today. He started in the back. He's raced his way inside the top 20. Same thing happened to him last week, Jamie. He had some issues under the hood. They got it fixed, and he drove to a top 20. So as a kid like Daniel making his first truck starts of, the, of his career, it's really cool to see him just persevere, push through it, and get some results. The 19-year-old out of the land, Florida, carrying that on board for us, doing a nice job. And this is it's a lot to learn when you go from the Arkham Menard series, move up to the truck series, and all these different styles of tracks, just trying to figure it out. So he told me he had never done simulation for a race before until this one. Wow. So he expected to run better. He said, I realize the mental game of racing, it's not about having fun and just getting in. You've got to work at your craft, and he's done it for this day. Well, I'm glad you, you said something about the mental game of racing because it is very mental. You, you think of a lot of other sports, and everybody talks about the mental games and the mental mindset. Racing is the exact same way. You have to be in the right mindset. I don't want to talk too much because we've got a good race happening here. <laughs> yeah. What about the grays? Two shades of gray. <laughs> <laughs> the brothers battling <laughs> Taylor Gray and Tanner Gray. This is fun. The two grew up racing together. Tanner, though, used to race in a straight line. He raced in the NHRA. Oh, and he's going to get the side best by of side. Sorry. Sorry, little bro. That is awesome battle. Come on, Tanner, it's your brother's birthday. <laughs> no thanks. What Tony say back in the day, I wrecked my grandmother to win this race. You wreck your brother to move forward, right? I've done that. I wrecked two of uh, our KHI cars one time to win at Montreal in an RCR car. My wife was not happy. <laughs> Hard <laughs> for them to be mad won. at the owner, but. I did my job. <laughs> what a battle this has been. Smooth sailing, it's five to go here. Zane Smith continues to lead. What a day it has been for him. Kevin, what's this like? Zane Smith, five to go. He's thinking to himself, no caution, no caution. He looks in the mirror and sees Kyle Busch. How much is he paying attention to Kyle or is he just making lap time? I think he's just making lap time, but the one thing I did notice right there going up that hill is Kyle Busch going around that bump 
into the break zone, he kind of moved to the left a little bit to go around the bump and, and not have uh, the bump affect the, the, the driving of his truck under braking. But Zane is just in a rhythm, and that goes right into tune with what this racetrack is, being in a rhythm, doing what you have to do. Last lap, he matched Kyle Busch's lap time within a thousandth of a second. That's all he needs to do, right? Just, just put the truck in the right spot. Don't overdrive it. Don't spin the tires. Just do what you have to do, and you're going to win this race if the caution doesn't come out. Nice to see Ben Rhodes having such a good run. He's had a good couple of races in a row. He's got a new crew chief this year and Jared Prince. Thor Sport, they mixed up the crew chiefs a little bit this year, and you never know if it's going to stick. Chemistry has a lot to do with things, but I think this is a great pairing. He had a good run here last year, but he's running one position better than he did in 22. I'll tell you something interesting, and I'm not going to call Zane Smith and tell him. In six of the last seven road races, the final green flag run was three laps. Oh, Mike. Oh, boy. He is not going to want to hear that. That's right. He's not. But if the caution flies, he's going to have to roll up them sleeves and go door to door with Kyle Busch. And I'll promise you that's not a surprise to any of the crew chiefs sitting on the pit boxes because they all have the stats. We have <laughs> the percentages of cautions. We have the percentages of green flag runs, yellow flag runs, when to pit, when not to pit. Whether four tires are better than two tires, whatever it is, they have the information on that pit box. So they're seeing it. Just don't tell Zane. There's so much going on in those pit boxes. I wish that when you're pit reporting, you could show it and talk about it. But that whole team chat thing that you guys always have, people are scanning other teams. They know exactly what they're saying and when they're going to pit. There's just so much information. I don't know how you you figure out what you need and what you don't in order to win the race. Chris Lawson, Brian Patty, the two crew chiefs that are going to go head to head for this win, it looks like. And they're all thinking about the stats and wondering what their plan will be how they will go win this race if they do have to line up and do a restart. Zane Smith in the 38 kicked off the season with a win once again at Daytona. And he's like, we can't just put that in the bag and say, hey, we've got a win. Let's go out and learn some stuff. It's hammer down. We need to focus. This is a small team. They don't get a whole lot of equipment. They don't have a ton of resources. And I talked to him about that and he said, they're going to bring two new trucks this year. Mm -hmm. And this last year was one of the trucks he got to choose as a brand new one. And it worked. It went to Victory Lane, so they kept it. And, and now we'll see if he can make it two for two here. Well, it puts you in a great position for the rest of the season because you can get more aggressive and you can try things after you get to Victory Lane because you know you, you, you're in the playoffs and you're going to be racing for a championship. And then it becomes, how can I get better? See Ross Chastain there, right in the dirt in, in turn eight. You want those right side tires to be hooked on the, on the left side of that sidewall of the tire, pull you around the corner right up the hill if you do it right. You know, we talked about three guys that we thought we would be talking about all day at the beginning. It was Ross Chastain, it was Kyle Busch, it was Zane Smith. Ross had some issues uh, in his trunk with his fuel cell, and then Zane, just made the perfect pit stop. They pitted right when they needed to, and Kyle was a lap late on that. So that's how these three, these three trucks that we felt like would be dominant, have wound up where they are right now with a big advantage to Zane. I'm so impressed that Ross Chastain has bounced back after those issues. He was on pit road quite a while, and now here he is running up there in seven. Well, kudos to the crew. Yeah, they either figured changed, it out. Yeah, they, they, they fixed the, the fuel pressure issue in the trunk under caution. And then Another shout out to Zane, to, excuse me, Ben Rhodes, because his tires are older, but yet he's hanging right in there with Kyle Busch. There's Ben. Wow, let's, that's violent. Let's listen to how violent it is and listen to how he works the gas. Well, this is coming off the last corner, turn 20, and you're going to see going into turn one up here. Right, in, right when you want to push on the brake zone, you'll hear the truck jump. Oh, there it was. Coming into turn one, there'll be another big jump right here. There it is. Clean that back up right there. 137.96. Out back is a 47. Clean that up a little bit here. Nice and smooth. Don't overdrive it here, bud. Three laps to go here at Circuit of the Americas. Had five different leaders, nine lead changes, three cautions today for five laps. I think it's been the perfect amount. Where, where are you at right now with your brain 
Kevin, bouncing around like this all day long. I mean, that's a, that's a lot to deal with. It's, it's hot. You're bouncing around all day. It is a lot to deal with. And, and the biggest thing you want to do is just minimize the mistakes. How do I lose the least amount of time? I don't want to make a mistake to where I lose a second. I want to make a mistake to where I lose a tenth. So you have to have the visual markers. You have to have the rhythm and the flow with the throttle pedal and the brake and everything that, that happens from lap to lap. And you have to make the adjustment from the lap before. You know, if you, if you made a mistake coming up, we're coming up to turn 12 right there. If you made a mistake in 12, okay, let's make the adjustment this lap to get in a little less or let off the brake a little sooner. And that's constant throughout the race. Mm. Such a mental game, as you mentioned. Ross giving a wave out the window to Corey Heim. Thanks for the respect. I'm going to go see if I can catch Tyler Ankrum getting the top five. That's Chastain's mentality. That was a battle for sixth. Chastain won that, so Corey Heim moves back to seventh. A lot of these trucks with some damage. Yeah, and it's such an adjustment. You know, Ross is in the position where he's he's in that mindset of, okay, I, I need to maximize my day to get the most points for my team because when you when you know you can't lose, you just can't quit. You got you got to get every point that you can. I know Ross is not racing for points in the truck series, but how many times have we talked about, oh, that guy missed the playoffs by a point, that guy missed the playoffs by two points. Whatever the scenario is, you have to maximize the day. And this, this team has done a great job in just keeping themselves running, A, and Ross coming back to uh, put himself in the top five so far. See your leader, Zane Smith. Two laps to go here at Circuit of the Americas. Can he hang on and bring it home for the second straight year in a row? Can Kyle Busch close that gap at all? He's right now just under five seconds behind the leader. And Ben Rhodes in third, Ty Majeski in fourth, and Tyler Ingram. Really nice run for him today, top five. Yeah, you see there on the pylon just outside the top five, Nick Sanchez, eighth, got that great finish at Atlanta after a couple of problems in the first two races, and now a solid run for the two truck as you see him here making his way up the track. Gain bridge on that two truck, beautiful truck. Good job for Nick. Another driver who came up racing go-karts on road courses from Miami, Florida. So background in road course racing, but again, he's brand new to the truck series. So just getting used to everything, live pit stops, a lot of things for these drivers to take in. And he's just run with it this year and does everything he can to get better. Well, and this is the best way to get better. You, you put yourself on the, on the racetrack in competition and, and you see things that, that are happening from your competitors, where to be on the racetrack, where you, and when you get home, you say, okay, I wasn't good under braking. I didn't do a good job managing my tires. I did a great job at this. Whatever it is, you have to be able to analyze yourself. You have to be honest with yourself to say, I need to get better here, here, and here. I did this good. Okay, oh, if, if you win today, you still have to analyze yourself like you lost. If you lose today, they have to all be the same. Every week, you have to be able to improve yourself and be open-minded to making things better. Coming to one to go, here's a nice battle for a spot in the top five. As Ross is trying to heat up Tyler Ankrum. Now we go super speedway racing. They say it's an opportunity race. A lot of people call a road course an opportunity race. And you look at the stats. 18 different winners in the last 18 road course races. I don't know, Zane Smith, Kyle Busch both won last year, so I'm thinking maybe that streak <laughs> comes to an end today. Opportunity 500 and unpredictability. We talked about that at the beginning and strategy. It's all played out a whole lot like we thought it would. Zane Smith, no friends around him as the white flag comes out. Yeah, right now he's just thinking to himself, all right, I can I can see where Kyle is in my mirror. All I need to do is just keep this thing in between the lines, not make any big mistakes right here. When I come to the S's right here, make sure I have myself plenty of room to not <laughs> to not be in, in position for a penalty. And it just all went their way. You know, they, they put themselves in position, like you said earlier, Jamie, to capitalize on that caution flag and be on pit road and still get the stage points and you know Kyle's team was on the on the other end of the spectrum they didn't pit at the right time and put themselves behind and that's really what put Zane in position to be in contention to to control this race was the pit stop it all came down to the pit stop and we talked about that before the race started a lot of what's going to happen today is going to happen on top of that pit box but some good news for Kyle Busch he might have had his 
he might have gotten beaten anyway because the last time by about a half a second faster was Zane Smith, and he's got a five-second lead. So that is a really fast 38 truck. Everything worked out, but uh, Kyle might have come up short anyway. We heard from Zane Smith at the start of the, of the show, and, and he said, you know, I, I feel like the truck was a little bit better in some areas last year. I don't know. We led 11 laps last year, and uh, he's already led 15 laps today. So I'd say in race, it's been a little bit better. A lot of Zane Smith time here today. Chris Lawson on the pit box making perfect calls. And this kid has drove, driven a perfect race. 23-year-old out of Huntington Beach, California. There's Chris. Won the last two straight races here. In Austin, two different drivers looking They're to do good. it Here's again. All good. That's what you want to hear on the last lap. Nice gap. He Josh. got a little roughed up. He's got some damage on that truck. He had to earn it. And here he comes, the last turn. The 38, All right, check Zane up Smith. Right, baby, He'll win it at Good Circuit job, of the Americas. Back to back for Zane Smith. Kyle Busch brings it home second. Ben Rhodes on the front stretch. I believe he is out of fuel. Driveline just came out of Ben Rhodes' truck here on the front straightaway. They need to throw a caution flag. Everybody's having to avoid. He's dropped some debris on the racetrack as well. Ben Rhodes limping it up the hill as the 38 of Zane Smith burns it down. There's that debris right there before the start finish line. He was able to coast across for a 10th place finish. End of the race, caution comes out. Zane Smith, Kyle Busch, Ty Majeski brings it home third. Tyler Ankrum and Ross Chastain with a top five after all of that. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that need to thank their crew today. <laughs> Ross yes. Chastain, Zane Smith, Ty Majeski. Um, those, those guys all did a great job on, on pit road. No quit. And he'll take that nice long lap around to wave to the fans. What a day it was for Zane Smith. Let's 16 laps. Did what we expected. I think the one question we had was how good would Kyle Busch be and how good would Ross Chastain be? Yeah, we talked in the pre-race show about what do we do to beat Kyle Busch and Ross Chastain? Well, every box was checked by the 38 crew and driver, and that's exactly how it happened. Perfect strategy, great driving, fast truck. And now you get to celebrate. Second win of the season for Zane Smith, Chris Lawson and company. So let's see exactly what happened here with Ben Rhodes. Stuff started falling apart, Jamie. Driveline issues, look at all that. Oh my goodness. Man, I'm just surprised he's able to coast all the way up that hill, aren't you? Yeah, that is a long ways that he coasted. Luckily, it's a little bit downhill. Ooh. Uh, we've had that happen before, Ooh. huh, Kevin? I'm it telling is. you what, that is one of the scariest yes. things that can ever happen. And you hope that it doesn't come through the sheet metal. Luckily, NASCAR has done a great job. You see the grooves, and there's two big iron loops that, that go around to protect that driveline from coming inside. Years ago, they used to just fly through the sheet metal, but... Luckily today, those big steel hoops are in there to uh, to protect it from that. Could have been a much worse outcome for him, but it happened just coming in to turn 20, and he brings it home for a top 10. Kyle Busch wondering what could have been if he had pitted a little bit earlier. I don't know that enough people you guys do a great job of covering it but i don't know that everybody outside of the truck series garage really understands how good zane smith is because yeah. every week even when their truck's bad all of a sudden they wind up in the front in contention winning races that they probably don't have the fastest truck and that's when you really know you have things together when you can win races that you don't have the fastest truck he was in contention today but they did a great job of putting themselves in position and didn't make any mistakes. But week after week, they do it. 
You know, and Zane Smith, he raced in the Daytona 500 with the same crew chief, Chris Lawson. He'll do a handful more. Other people are seeing what you're talking about in Zane Smith, seeing that talent, that potential. Well, just think about this. In 22, Zane was a truck champion. He got his first two wins of the year at Daytona and Coda. What has he done this year, Jamie? Well, he won at Daytona. He's won at Coda. It's what, like a carbon copy. What kind of message does that send to the competition? <laughs> oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. We're going to light them up, aren't we? This is fun. Smoke them if you got them. Jake Blau getting all that action. He's always right in the mix. Cameraman, we've got the best on the job. With all the cameras, how fun is that? It's fun for everybody but the team owner. <laughs> Back it down. Zane Smith climbs from the truck. NASCAR waiting with that checkered flag. 